Hi there, and welcome to this video about building multi-tenant solutions for SharePoint Online. Why would you care about building multi-tenant applications, first of all? Well, because you might be an ISV willing to create a solution that you want to sell to multiple customers, or maybe you are a developer working in an enterprise company which is based on multiple tenants for multi-regions needs, or maybe because you want to have a centralized deployment and maintenance of your solutions, regardless if you are an ISV or a developer working in a big enterprise company. Whenever you want to do that, you simply need to register an application in Azure Active Directory and to choose to make it multi-tenant, meaning that you will select to allow authentication of users from multiple tenants. When you do that, then you can configure the permissions that you need for your application and in every single tenant where you want to use your application, you will have to register the application in the tenant and grant those permissions in the target tenant. The process is quite straightforward, but not always that easy. That's why with SharePoint Framework, if you are creating an SPFX multi-tenant solution, your life can be easier because the SPFX manifest of a solution allows you to easily configure all of the needed settings to have a better experience for developers and administrators when registering a multi-tenant solution. So, let me move to the new environment and let me show you what I'm talking about. So, let's start registering a multi-tenant application in Azure Active Directory. Here I am in the app registration sections of my target tenant. I can simply click on new registration, provide a name, which can be sample uh, multi-tenant app. And right here in the supported account types, rather than using the default uh, accounts in the organizational directory only, I can choose to use accounts in any organizational directory, meaning that the application will be multi-tenant. And eventually, if you want to support also the Microsoft accounts, you can select the third option. So let me click on the register button. And the result of this registration step will be that we will have an application in Azure AD with a client ID, which you should uh, keep uh, track of uh, for further use, the tenant ID. And if you click on the endpoints button right here, you can see that all of the URLs for the open authorization flow, as well as for any other security protocol you want to use, are related to the organization's uh, name rather than on a specific tenant name, meaning that this application will target any organization and not only a specific target tenant. Then when you configure the permissions for your application, like for example, right now we have the user.read for delegated uh, tokens, we can add additional permissions for Microsoft Graph, uh, for example, delegated permission again, and you want to configure the mail send permission and by selecting it, you can add the delegated permission to the app. Whenever you will share this application registration with other tenants, users will have to grant the mail send and the user.read delegated permissions in their tenant. And as you can see right here, we have the admin consent required, meaning that right now with the no value, these two permissions do not require a tenant admin to do the actual grant of the permission. On the contrary, if we add, for example, a delegated permission for site dot something like, I don't know, uh, full control, Full control requires, as you can see from this, yes, admin consent. So if you will add this permission to the application, in your own tenant, you will have as a tenant admin to grant the permission, as well as in any other tenant where you will register the multi-tenant application, you will need an admin grant. Now, I already have an application that I registered, which is this one, the Adin Transformation Multi-Tenant one, with this specific client ID. It is a multi-tenant one, as you can see right here. And we can also see that it is a multi-tenant if we go in the authentication section and we see that right here we authenticate accounts in any organizational directory. It has been configured with a couple of return URLs like the PMP GitHub and another one. And we have a bunch of permissions configured like the mail send and the user.read.all which requires admin consent. Now, let's say that I want to register this application on any other tenant and just for the sake of making an example, I will target a new tenant that I have in my environment. So, 
In order to register this application, we will need to rely on a URL like the following one. So https login.microsoftonline.com The tenant ID or organizations is if we are targeting a multi-tenant scenario. Auth2, which is the version of open authorization, authorize, and we have to provide the client ID of the application that we want to register. The flavor of response that we want to have, we want to have an authorization code right now. The redirect URI where we want to redirect the user after the registration and the authorization. And then the response mode, which will be query, meaning that we want to get back the authorization code in the query string of the response. And we want to get an authorization code for a specific scope, permission scope that we want to have. So, for example, a real URL could be this one, organization, because we are in a multi-tenant scenario. This is the client ID of the application that we have in Azure Active Directory. So, precisely this one, as you can see, this is the client ID I'm targeting. Then we want to have an authorization code. We want to redirect the user right here, the query string as before, and this will be the uh, permission scope that we want to uh, have granted. So, let me copy this URL. And let me go to a fresh tenant where I don't have this application registered. So let me copy this URL. And as you will see, Azure Active Directory will prompt my user to grant the permissions to the app. So the read all user profile and the send mail as you. As you can see, I'm right now using an admin account in the target tenant. So I can consent on behalf of the organization these permissions to the application meaning that all of the user will then find this application registered and they will not need to do any additional grant. In a scenario where we are doing this process using an account which is not an admin account, if the permissions are all permissions that do not require a tenant admin consent, then the users will be able to grant for themselves the permission. If the permissions requested by the application include any of the permissions that require the tenant admin consent, then they will not be able to grant the permission and they will need to ask an admin, a tenant admin, to do the actual grant and registration. So now I'm a tenant admin and I can do that. Notice also this unverified link right here. If you want to have applications that you want to provide as an ISV, to multiple customers, you should register as a Microsoft partner and you should make your application verified. And in the reference content of this video and the article related to this video, you can find additional details about how to do that. So now I will click on Accept. My application will be registered and now I've got redirected to the redirection URL that I provided in the uh, grant URL. Notice that I have in the query string an authorization code that I can then use to get an access token to consume Microsoft Graph through the application that I've just registered. So this is the flow from an admin point of view and from a developer point of view in order to register an application and then grant access to that application to another tenant. And in fact, if now we go to portal.azure.com, right here, portal.azure.com, we go into the Azure Active Directory of this tenant and we go to the Enterprise Applications, we can see that right here we have the Add-in Transformation Multi-Tenant Application that we have just registered. We can recognize the application ID, we can have a look at the permissions and so on and so forth. So we can see what we granted permissions to. And eventually, if we want to get rid of it, we can go to Properties and we can delete the application registered in our target tenant. Now, let's say that we want to use such kind of application in a SharePoint framework solution. So here, for example, I have a SharePoint framework solution that I have created in order to consume a backend API through an adapted card extension for uh, Microsoft Viva Connections. I will not dig into the details of this application, but I will simply tell you that in the package solution.json file of this SharePoint framework solution, I declare that from a web API permission request, I want to have access to this application, which will need to have the orders.fullControl permission scope granted for SharePoint framework in order to consume this resource, which is a custom API that I have. And I'm specifying the client ID and the reply URL that I want to use for the uh, actual grant flow. This application, if we go 
to the Azure Active Directory where it has been registered. And let me show you. This is the application in the target uh, Azure Active Directory where it was registered. This is an application which is configured as a multi-tenant application, as you can see from here, or also from the endpoints, like always. And in this application, we have the API permissions to read the user with a delegated access token. But we also expose an API with a couple of permissions, which are custom permissions, PMP contours orders slash orders full control, and slash orders dot read. In order to consume this API from SharePoint Framework, as I showed you before, I declare that I want for this resource to have the orders dot full control permission. But whenever I will use this application on any fresh new tenant where the application is not registered, we will have, first of all, to register the application in the target tenant. In order to do that, with SharePoint Framework, you can add these two additional attributes, the app ID, and this is the client ID of the application we are targeting, so this one. And we have the reply URL, which has to be one of the reply URLs configured in the authentication section of the application. So that in Visual Studio Code with SharePoint Framework, you can create an SPPKG package for your solution and you can upload it to a target app catalog. So let me do that and let me show you the app catalog in a target tenant where I want to install this application. So let me click on upload and let me select the SPPKG file of my solution. By doing that, the solution will be uploaded in the app catalog. I will be able to enable this app for the whole tenant by clicking on enable app. And as you can see right here, we see that this application is requesting to have the orders.full control permission for the pmp.contoso.orders application. However, this application is not yet registered in my target tenant. So let's click on the enable app button. Now, the application has been enabled, but we still need to go to the API access page to grant the requested permissions to the application. Let's click on it. Right here, we see that we have the pmp.contoso.order resource with a pending permission of type orders full control. If I select this item and I click on approve, I can approve this permission request. But in order to do the permission request, first of all, I will have to grant the application the requested permissions for Microsoft Graph on my target tenant, and I will have to register the application in my target tenant. So as a tenant admin, I can click on this consent on behalf of your organization. I can click accept. The application will be registered on my tenant and I will be redirected to the redirection URL provided in the application configuration in the uh, package solution.json file. And now I will be able to grant the permission. And in fact, we can see right here that the approved requests include the permission orders.full control for the PMP contoso orders. And if I go to the Azure Active Directory of my target tenant and I go to the Enterprise Applications, I can see that right here I have the pmp.contoso.orders application that got registered in my target tenant. So being able to use the configuration in the package solution.json file to automatically register and grant the permission in my target tenant really improves the quality of life of people installing your SharePoint framework solutions in a multi-tenant scenario. Here you can find additional links if you want to dig more into the topic covered. And like always, thank you for watching this video.